Hi everyone, this video is introducing a series of tutorials that will show you how to use displacement in Rhino. And what we're going to set up is something like this. And um, I may have shown you this file previously, but these are just simple shapes, a cylinder and a cone in Rhino. And we are applying a both a material bitmap to these objects and also a um, displacement. And um, I'm going to show you in the next couple of videos how you can set this up. Uh, just to let you know where we're going, I'm making a copy of this cone. And um, if we, it's helpful to have the properties open. And if we go to properties, we can see that there is a um, displacement texture on this object. And if I click it off, we can see that um, we just have the cone and there's also a bitmap assigned to this. So what I can also do here under material is if I go to default material, we can see the base shape. If I go back to displacement, and turn on the displacement. We can see that texture and it is, uh, but we don't see the color. And uh, so we can set the color and the texture independently. For example, I can go back to the material here, choose a different material, and now I'm using the displacement and a completely different image file to get a different result. And um, so, also, let me just quickly show you here how to, um, sorry, I'm going to go back to this material, go to um, default material, so there's no bitmap on this. And if right now you can see that when I select the object, I'm just getting the, um, the default NURBS cone underneath the displacement texture. So this displacement texture is being generated for, for the view. If I want to extract that information as a mesh model, uh, I have to uh, use a command called extract render mesh. So you, if you start typing extract, extract render mesh should come up in the Rhino dialog. And the displacement succeeded. And now you can see that there's a second object here. This is still the cone with the displacement applied and now this object is a um, is a mesh so uh, and it has a, a bunch of faces if I um, one thing that I can do with displacement now that I've generated this displacement mesh is I could uh, I could now choose to um, knock this down to a lower number of polygons so, and I would do that using the reduce mesh command. So if I type reduce mesh, let me pull the, oh, we do have the options open. Um, <clears throat> what we're seeing here is that this mesh has 142,734 polygons. So a lot of polygons. Uh, if we wanted to reduce this, we can pick a number of polygons to reduce it to, or we could reduce it by a percentage. So let's say we reduce it by half. And this is going to take a minute. It, at the top, it's showing you the reduction. And voila, now we have this reduced mesh. So it's going to operate on the, uh, on the mesh. It's not going to make a copy by default. Um, and as you can see, uh, the uh, resolution, the, these objects look pretty similar, uh, almost identical. Uh, but you can continue to reduce this, and I'm just going to go ahead and reduce it to a very low number. So right now it's still 71,000 polygons. Uh, let's reduce it to something like 10,000 polygons and see what we have after that. So we're going to hit OK, and you'll notice that the reduction goes faster because we have fewer polygons to reduce. I'm, I was going to pause the video, but it's almost done. 
Okay, cool. Now we can start to see a, a difference between these two things, right? Like this is much more uh, faceted. Uh, and I can continue to reduce this further. So I'm gonna make a copy of this and I'm making a copy just by pressing down on the Alt key as I use the widget to drag it over. Uh, I'm gonna reduce this one more time. And let's see what happens if we reduce it to a really low number of something like 100 polygons. Still reducing. Okay, cool. Now you can see we have a really, um, a really faceted thing. And um, let me pause the video for one moment. Okay, it took me a minute to figure out how to pause it, uh, but now I'm back. And what you can see here is that um, there's interesting shading on this mesh. Um, it's not showing the facets very clearly. So if we want to change that, we can use a command called rebuild, um, rebuild mesh normal. So if you start typing rebuild mesh, you can scroll down and find rebuild mesh normals. And now this turns it into a um, easily viewed shape. Now, if I explode this, see, uh, okay, it explodes it into 100 meshes. So these meshes are, when this mesh is, um, I don't know why it's displacing on this, there we go. Um, when this, uh, this mesh is joined by default, but the vertices aren't welded. Uh, so one thing if we wanted to 3D print this that we would want to do is, and this is just general um, mesh information for the feature, but we're going to want to weld all the vertices together. So I'm going to type weld vertices and then select the vertices to weld. Just drag a box around the whole thing. Um, you can see we get that funny, um, that funny shading again. However, if we explode this thing, it will say that one mesh cannot be exploded into multiple parts. That's good. Uh, now we can rebuild the mesh normals again, and we see a, um, a slightly, uh, now, now it's easier to view. Um, I think what's happening here is you can see that it's smoothing the edges on this mesh. Um, for the for the view, but these are in fact sharp edges. Uh, what we could now do if we uh, wanted to now let's let's reduce this even further. Further, so I'm going to reduce this mesh to um, say like 20 polygons, and now we have this um, really faceted shape. It can't be exploded, um, but we could apply the displacement that we had to this uh, to the other ones on to this guy now. Um, there are already going to be some displacement textures in here. So I'm just going to choose one. And now you can see that I'm getting some funny lumpy shape here. Uh, because the object's low resolution, I'm not, and it could actually have something to do with this texture. So let me try a different one. Let's try uh, this concrete bump. See, I'm getting a little bit more here. And uh, let's see what happens if we apply a new texture mapping, something like a spherical mapping. And just we'll go over this in the next video. Um, not too different. Okay, cool. Um, but I should, in the displacement, also be able to change these settings, like I change that to 10. Okay, great, there. So um, what I did to now see more, uh, more texture was to, in the displacement itself, uh, change the black point and the white point. So we're going to go over that in the next video, but this is a quick introduction to the types of things that we could do. Uh, to use displacement to add texture to a form or to, um, or to even uh, model a new form based on a simple shape, right? Because um, from this cone, we were able to get this uh, 
sort of uh, very prehistoric, um, you know, weird. <laughs> I don't know if it's prehistoric or geologic. That's a better uh, a better term. It's very geologic shape. Um, and again, if I wanted to have this as a um, as a full model, all I have to do is extract the render mesh. And so once I've done that, then you can see I have this thing. And it's probably a closed surface. We can look at the, under the properties, we should be able to look at the object details here. And valid mesh, valid closed polygon mesh. So theoretically, this um, is a 3D printable object. Um, so I'm going to um, show you how to set this up, starting from a texture file. Uh, to the uh, applying of that texture and displacement map to a object. And that's what we'll be going over in the next few video videos.